Hello, friends, and welcome to Chapter 6, Encouraging, Paraphrasing, and Summarizing Active Listening and Cognition. All right, so start off with awareness and knowledge. Value active listening in the communication process and be aware of cognitive and emotional talk and the differences. So basically, try to be aware of what the thought processes are and what the emotions are behind the talk that's going on and just understand the differences. All right, identify the roles of intentional participation, decision making and responding to client conversation. Be aware of the importance of paraphrasing and reflection of feeling for providing feedback to the client that you are hearing them. All right, skills in action, ability to demonstrate cognitive empathy and facilitate client cognitive understanding for clear decision making and more effective action. Ability to discern when the talkative client repeats the story too often or in too much detail. So sometimes you're really going to have to rein them in because when you're asking a client questions or when you're just trying to have a conversation, they might be very repetitive especially if you are looking at the time you just want to be very mindful that you're getting everything out of the session that you need to or that they need to and one important thing now that i'm thinking about time it's a good idea when you're in your office to have maybe like two or three clocks in your office maybe if you're sitting you know like how i'm sitting and then you're sitting across from the client maybe have a, a clock right behind the client, maybe if it's on a desk or on the wall, and then you can have another clock maybe to the side of you, and then you can have one behind you so that the client is also maybe mindful of the time. All right, uh, ability to clarify for the client and you, the interviewer, what is really being said during the session. So we don't want to make any assumptions about what is going on. You want to be very matter of fact and clarify, you know, if, especially if you don't understand something. All right, ability to use the checkout to verify the accuracy of what you hear by saying back to clients the essence of their comments and providing periodic summarizations. So it is good, that's, that's very much, it's kind of parroting, mimicking that you're hearing what the client is saying and you just kind of like paraphrase or restate to so to actually to make them i just got choked up um not choked up like tongue-tied so you want to make sure that you are understanding what they're saying and that you give them the sense that you understand so sometimes if you're maybe a little unsure you might want to just say okay so what i think i heard you say or can you maybe repeat that or is this what you meant so whenever you find yourself in that situation just ask uh, ability to promote through cognitive empathy development of the brain's executive functions central for organizing thoughts, regulating emotions, planning action, and implementing decisions. Encouraging, paraphrasing, and summarizing are active listening skills at the Cognitive Center of the Basic Listening Sequence and are key in building the empathetic relationship. So what you wanna do, especially when you're meeting a client for the first time, you don't wanna bombard them with a bunch of questions. It's a bit overwhelming and it's a little too much when it's just like, okay, so tell me this. All right, so tell me that. All right, so what do you think when? Just like when it's boom, 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 boom. So it's really good that as you're asking questions that maybe then you're paraphrasing or you're summarizing or because that really does help them believe. I mean, you should be doing this, but like they have a sense and a comfortability that you're actually listening to them when you can go back and ask them questions, especially if you're, you know, in your interview process or, you know, in the very beginning and then maybe 20 minutes in, you go back to something that you remembered um, because then that gives them the sense that, okay, they really do listen to me. All right. When we attend and clients sense that their stories are heard, they open up and become more ready to change or ready for change. So like I said before, if you go back and you reflect on things or you paraphrase or summarize, you know, you'll get your own natural little groove going when you're working with people.
All right, leads to more effective executive brain function, which in turn improves cognitive understanding of issues and decision making. Active listening is a communication process that requires intentional participation, decision making, and responding to client conversation. Accurate listening leads to client understanding and synthesis, providing clients with a clear picture of their own stories. You know, sometimes when they're telling a story and you are, you know, really honing in and listening to that and you're asking questions or you're, again, paraphrasing, encouraging, summarizing, whatever it is you're doing, it many times gives them a better understanding of the, their own story that they're telling. So it is good when you're not just nodding, nodding is good, but when you're, you know, asking for more or you're, you know, repeating something that they've said for understanding. All right, active listening is central in facilitating our brain's executive functioning, cognitive understanding, and making sense of the emotional underpinnings of the story. All right, encouraging. Encourage with short responses that help clients keep talking. They may be verbal, repeating key words and short statements, or nonverbal by head nods and smiling. So that's what I just said a minute ago. Anticipated client response. Clients will elaborate on the topic, particularly when encouragers and restatements are used in a questioning, supportive tone of voice. So it's really important when you are, again, getting to know the client, your first session, maybe your second session, that you're not just hitting them with a ton of questions, but that you are, you know, actively listening to them and you're restating you're, you know, you have a, a good tone about you that it's not just, you know, monotone or direct or just boom, boom, boom. You just want to try to engage with them and be yourself. Try not to be too like stern or, you know, feel that you have to be this like certain type of way, because when you do that, they really, they freeze up. So you just want to make sure that Try to be yourself and, you know, that's how you'll get the best out of them. All right, paraphrasing, also known as reflection of content. Shorten or clarify the essence of what has just been said, but be sure to use the client's main words when you paraphrase. Paraphrases are often fed back to the client in a questioning tone of voice. So it's like when you say, so what I think I heard you say, or can you tell me that again? Because I think I heard you say blank. So you want to try to always use their words back because you don't want to put words into their mouth. So as best as you can recall, go ahead and re, you know, paraphrase something or whatever that is essential for that conversation that you're having. All right. And then the anticipated client response, clients will feel heard. They tend to give more detail without repeating the exact same story. They also become clear and more organized in their thinking. If a paraphrase is inaccurate, the client has an opportunity to correct the interviewer. Paraphrasing of client statements is important in cognitive empathy. All right, for summarizing, summarize client comments and integrate thoughts, emotions, and behaviors similar to paraphrasing, but used over a longer time span, because now you are basically summarizing everything. And their response, clients will feel heard and often learn how their complex and even fragmented stories are integrated. A summary helps clients make sense of their lives and will facilitate a more centered and focused discussion. I know that sometimes when I'm done with a session with somebody, even if I've been with them for a long time, it doesn't really matter. Um, we'll kind of recap some stuff. Not always. Sometimes it's just a flow of a conversation and then we're done. Um, but I always end it. Like I always have an end. But what I'm saying is sometimes I don't like just do this whole recap of something. But when you do that and you kind of, you know, say, okay, from the beginning to the end, blah, blah, blah. A lot of times my clients will say, wow, now that you like said it like that, it really makes me think like I really didn't think about that or, you know, I'm a lot better than I thought I was. So 
It's really good when you are building them up and you're encouraging them, when you're paraphrasing things that they've already said, and then when you summarize the entire session. All right, secondarily, a summary provides a more coherent transition from one topic to the next or a way to begin and end a full session. As a client organizes the story more effectively, we see growth in brain executive functioning and better decision making. And often you'll see that when clients come in for the first time, they're coming in for whatever was the catalyst, the breaking thing, but obviously that's not the main thing they need to be in there for, it's just what brought them in there. And so they may give you two or three or four different things to talk about and they'll be all over the place and that's okay. It's your job to, once they kind of like get all that stuff out, redirect and say, okay, so what I, what I think maybe we'll focus on is this, or, you know, what I heard you talk about the most in this session was about, you know, how the, how your breakup really affected you. And, um, you have this sense of, you know, feeling lost and you can't move on. So maybe what we'll focus on next time is, and then whatever it is that you want to focus on. Or, you know, and if the client says, well, nah, I don't want to do that, or yeah, that sounds like a good idea, then that is where you come in for your homework. And, you know, you don't have to go do research or anything. You can, um, but it gives you an idea of like what to hone in on for the next session. All right. Check out perception check. Periodically check with your client to discover how your interviewing lead or skill was received. Is that right? Did I hear you correctly? What might I have missed? So these are just things to like give you little just suggestions. And then their response interviewing leads such as these give clients a chance to pause and reflect on what they have said. If you have missed something important or distorted their story and meaning, they have the opportunity to correct you. Without an occasional checkout, it is possible to lead clients away from what they really want to talk about. All right, so here is a little situation. Client Jennifer enters the room and starts talking immediately. And she says, I really need to talk to you. I don't know where to start. I just got my last exam back and it was a disaster. Maybe because I haven't studied much lately. I was up late drinking at a party last night and I almost passed out. I've been sort of going out with a guy for the last month, but that's over as of last night. Pause. But what really bothers me is that my mom and dad called last Monday and they are going to separate. I know that they have fought a lot, but I never thought it would come to this. I'm thinking of going home, but I'm afraid to. Jennifer continues for another three minutes in much the same vein, repeating herself somewhat and seems close to tears. At times, speech is so fast that it is hard to follow. Finally, she stops and looks at you expectantly. So it's like, what do you do? All right, so that is when your job is to frame things to how you want it to go now. So, and you can say, wow, you know, it sounds like I can tell in your voice from how fast you were talking that like you really are maybe anxious about this. You know, I had a client just this past week who he, well, I told him during our last session that I was like, you know, what I've noticed is that, you know, there's, I'm not going to go into detail, but basically I gave him something to think about. And I don't know if that kind of sat with him, but then our next session, he was talking slower. You know, I had given him some things to like really think and reflect on and work on. And I think that they're, you know, finally setting in. And then he was really like in a good place. And I told him in the end, I'm like, you know what I noticed for the first time, your speech and everything just flowed and you stopped and you paused and you said this and you said that. And then he was like, yeah, you know, I, I didn't realize that really set with me. Okay, so then we had like another session, a different time, and he was stressed and he was like, ba 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 ba, going again. And then I said, okay, I'm gonna stop you. I'm like, cause guess what I'm hearing? And he's like, oh, I'm, I'm going like a mile a minute. And I'm like, yes. So I'm like, 
I just want you to attend to your voice and what you're saying. And just when I said that and I was able to kind of redirect him, he just sat there and just calm and was just talking like, at a normal pace again. And so it's okay for you to interject and just say, you know, here's what I'm hearing. Here's what I'm, you know, I'm not sure if you're hearing this, but I just want you to maybe listen and never tell a client to stop, never tell them what to do, never tell them how to act, but help them be aware maybe of things that they're not aware of in that moment. All right, encouraging. Encouragers are verbal and nonverbal expressions the counselor or therapist can use to prompt clients to continue talking. Head nods and positive facial expressions, open gestures, minim minimal verbals, um or uh-huh. There's nothing more annoying, especially if I'm listening to a mock session and all I hear is mm-hmm, uh-huh, yep, mm, yep, mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. It's and they don't wanna hear that either. So it, it just sounds like it's repetitive and you're really not listening, but like you know when to say it. So just be mindful of that. Uh, repetition of key words from last statement and silence with appropriate nonverbal behavior. Sometimes when you're in a session, it's so appropriate to just be silent and you'll know when those times are when they actually happen. All right. Paraphrasing is the most important cognitive empathetic listening skill. An accurate paraphrase usually consists of four dimensions, a sentence stem that may include the client's name, the key words used by a client to describe the situation or person, the essence of what the client has said in briefer and clearer form, and a check for accuracy. You know, is that what I, did I hear that correctly? You know, just something like that. All right, summarize, pulls together and organizes client conversation, supporting the brain's executive functioning. Summarizing is a key to theory of mind and your ability to mentalize the world of the client. So again, that's being able to like kind of put yourself where they're at and think in their thought process. So you're not thinking like them, but you have the ability to mentalize their, their internal world. All right, attend to the client's verbal and nonverbal comments selectively attend to key concepts, restate key concepts to the client accurately, and check for accuracy at the end. All right, listening skills are used with children in much the same way as they are used with adults. Children generally respond best if you seek to understand the world as they do. Smiling, warmth, and the active listening skills are essential. Questions can put off some children but remain one of the best ways to obtain information and seek to get the child's perspective. So again, when you're speaking to a child, you wanna get on their level, you wanna get on their emotionality. Of course, you wanna act like them, but you wanna be able to just kind of lower yourself to where they're at. You, want, you don't wanna be this like big person towering over them. You wanna use like a lighter voice and you wanna just try to help them, you know, you know, ask them questions. It's a really good way to get information from children, but do it in a way that it's easy for them. And, you know, if you're, if this is your specialty or if that will be your specialty working with children, then there are a ton of really good classes. I personally don't work with children. I work with like te late teens and then adults. So I never really took those classes. All right, reflection questions. What do you think about the interview with Damaris conducted by Mary Bradford Ivy? So these are all things in the book. What did you notice that the interviewer did well? Did listening skills help to bring out Damaris's story? What can you expect if you use these same skills with an adult? And did Mary focus on strengths? I did not put the page number in there, so you'll just have to look it up. All right, the Convention on the Rights of the Child. The Convention on the Rights of the Child, or the CRC, represents the strongest commitment to the well-being of children in recent decades. Based on the belief that each child is born with the right to survival, food and nutrition, health and shelter, education, equal participation, and protection, children under the age of 18 require special legal protections. The four core principles of the CRC are non-discrimination, 
devotion to the best interest of the child, the right to life, survival, and development, and respect for the views and opinions of the child. UNICEF believes that helping children reach their potential will positively impact hum humanity's progress and reduce poverty. Research is clear that poverty and oppression deeply affect the developing brain. This is especially important because children represent the largest percentage of the world's poor. Accordingly, early investments in children's physical, intellectual, and emotional development, as well as the removal of the barriers affecting their physical and mental health should be a universal priority. Counseling and psychotherapy and the professionals that use these tools are in a privileged position to help children reach their full potential. All right, so when we attend to clients and use the active listening skills, we facilitate executive functioning and the development of a new neural networks that become part of long-term memory in the hippocampus. So basically, this is all the brain stuff now working. So when you are, you know, learning new things and you're, you know, developing new concepts and listening skills, your neural pathways are going nuts. They're lighting up all over the place and they're like just going boom, boom, boom. They're opening up new lines, new roads to be able to create these new memories so that when you go to sleep at night, your, you know, that's the time when long-term memories are solidified and then they go into your hippocampus, which is located in your temporal lobe. Your hippocampus is what looks like a little seahorse. All right, executive functioning is also critical for emotional regulation. Cognitions may be defined as language-based thought processes underlying all thinking activities. Therapies focusing on changing cognitions to achieve client change. Cognitive behavioral therapy, that is the number one go-to. Rational emotive behavioral therapy, or REBT, that's done by Albert Ellis. And then dialectical behavior therapy, DBT. Forgot who came up with DBT. It is escaping me right now. Um, but that is very good when you're working with borderline personality disorder. All right, language is one of the important issues related to the listening skills. Building trust requires learning about the other person's world. Involve yourself in the cultural communities and activities. Discuss cross-cultural differences early in the interview. When you are culturally different from your client, self-disclosure and an explanation of your methods may be helpful and consider gender differences. So it is okay to, again, if you are not of the same cultural background as your client, it is okay to give them a little piece of what your culture is like and just tell them, explain them what it's like a day in your world um, and ask them, you know, tell me some, about some of your cultural beliefs, you know, some of your holidays, your celebrations, get to like know who their community is and what they like to do, you know, for activities. And that really starts to build up that trust. All right, practice, practice, practice. Encouraging, paraphrasing, and summarizing are central skills to effective counseling and psychotherapy, regardless of your theory and choice and natural style. Intentional competence in these skills requires practice. Every client needs to be heard. Demonstrating that you are listening carefully makes a real difference. Achieving intentional competence takes time and practice. And you can see um, kind of a little glimpse of that on page 147. So our key points in practice, purpose of listening skills, encouragers, paraphrasers, summarizations, active listening, cognition, and executive functioning, <clears throat> diversity and active listening, a word of caution, and your portfolio of competencies and personal reflection. All right, so we did a good under 30 minutes today. Nice, short, um, lecture for this week. So hope you all have an amazing week and until next chapter, peace.